Okay, so in the first two weeks of this course and part of this week, we start talking about uh, semiconductor physics and then moved on to PN junctions. We learned about diodes and then learned about how to analyze diode based circuits and then uh, different kinds of uh, interesting applications for diode based circuits. Uh, we are now ready to actually learn about the first types, uh, the first type of transistors in the electronic circuits and devices course. Uh, in this course, we are going to learn about two different types of transistors, the bipolar or BJT transistors and the MOSFET transistors. So in chapter four, which we are going to start right now, we're going to start talking about the physics of bipolar transistors and how they're actually made. Uh, find out the voltage current relationship between uh, different terminals of these dev this device and uh, basically uh, know this device as a as a semiconductor um, well device electronic device. In chapter five, we are going to actually make interesting circuits using this device. We're going to make different kinds of amplifiers using bipolar transistors. And then uh, in chapter six, we are going to learn about the other type of transistor, which is more popular these days, a lot more popular than the bipolar transistors, which is which are called MOSFET transistors, metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistors. And in chapter seven, we are going to learn about different circuits, different amplifier circuits you, that are built using MOSFET transistors. So we're going to basically uh, go over this process twice, chapter four and five for bipolar transistors and learning about the device and the circuits. And then chapter six and seven, again, MOSFET transistors, learning about the device and then the circuits. Okay, so in the simplest uh, kind of a way of defining a transistor, we can define it as a voltage controlled current source. So um, if I want to actually uh, present to you some sort of a physical analogy. Imagine that you have a pipe, a water pipe, and there is some sort of a valve that is controlling the flow of water in this wall, in, in this pipe, right? So you have water coming in from here, going out from there, and by adjusting this valve here, you can actually adjust uh, the amount of water that is control that is basically flowing through this pipe right so in a sense by control by controlling a physical movement of this object here i'm controlling the flow of water between two different ends of the pipe right a transistor no matter if it is a bipolar transistor or mosfet transistor uh, essentially is a voltage controlled current source meaning that you have a flow of current you have a flow of charges moving through uh, basically between two different terminals of the transistor and then there is a third terminal so this is the first uh, kind of an element that is that has three terminals unlike the resistors capacitors inductors and diodes that we have learned before that had two terminals this time we are dealing with it uh, with a device that has three terminals so uh, either bipolar or MOSFETs, right? With MOSFETs, we actually see that later we will see that they have actually four terminals. But there are three main terminals in these devices that there's a current flowing from terminal, let's say terminal one to terminal two. And then there's a terminal three here that by changing the voltage on this terminal three, you can actually set the current that is flowing by from going from terminal one to two. So in a sense, you're, you're controlling the current between one to two by a voltage that is at three. That's why we call this a voltage controlled current source, right? And we have seen these voltage controlled current sources, at least uh, in, in, basically in the form of a symbol in electrical circuits, right? So it looked like this. We always had these dependent current sources that could have been controlled by voltage or by current. So if these are controlled by voltage, one of the examples of a voltage controlled current source is a transistor. So let's say that the, the current that is flowing through this, this branch, that is basically that this current source is there, is for example, two times Vx, right? Then we would say that this is a current source that is controlled by the voltage Vx. Therefore, it's a voltage controlled current source, okay? 
Now we're going to describe and in in details extensively um, that how the transistor works like a voltage controlled current source. But before talking about that, let's talk about why a voltage controlled current source is useful at all, right? Uh, we generally need transistors in the basically in the normal electronic circuits. We require we, we use them at, mostly for designing amplifiers or developing amplifiers. Uh, later on, we will see that certain transistors in center of in certain operating regions could be used as switches, and those switches are going to be used in digital electronics, uh, which well you will learn about that in other courses such as. ECS 3201, right? Here, we're gonna briefly touch on that, on how a transistor could become a switch. But for most of the time, the transistors that we're gonna use are gonna be operating or acting like a voltage controlled current source, okay? Now, how can I actually create an amplifier using a voltage controlled current source? And what is an amplifier? Uh, well, we all have some sort of a sense about an amplifier, some sort of a definition in our mind that could be well, a loose definition or not, but let's actually define it pr uh, properly. So the idea of an amplifier is that, well, it's a block. Most of the time we show it with a triangle kind of a thing, similar to op amp, which we call them operational amplifiers, that in the simplest definition, you have an input voltage in, you have an input signal, let's say sinusoidal signal, and then you will get, you provide an input signal like this, and you will get an amplified version of this signal at the output. So if this is the input, this is the output. The output's amplitude, the peak to peak value, is actually larger than the input. We call this an amplifier. And there are many, many different ways that we can implement amplifiers and, um, these amplifiers could have different kind of properties that we're going to talk about them. Uh, there are so many different parameters involved with an amplifier, like input, input impedance, output impedance, the voltage gain of the amplifier, sometimes the current gain of the amplifier, the trans impedance gain of the amplifier, um, the input referred noise of the amplifier. There's so many things that you can actually, there are so many parameters that uh, describe the performance of an amplifier. In this course, we're just going to start with the very basic stuff, which is well, voltage gain, and uh, sometimes we call it basically we uh, we will look at something called transconductance of an amplifier, and also we look into input and output impedances. Okay, so in the very basic definite, in the very basic form of it, an amplifier is defined as a block that amplifies your signals. It's it basically scales up the magnitude of the signal by a factor, which we call it for now gain. Okay, so how does a voltage controlled current source could help us uh, basically create an amplifier or make an amplifier? Uh, for that, just Consider this circuit here, very simple circuit. We have a V in, there's a V1 that I'm defining between this terminal and here, let's say here is ground. And then I have this voltage controlled current source. If I wanted to do it properly, I should have actually used the symbol like this, the diamond symbol, right? So that uh, it is actually shown that it's a depend, like basically it is indicating that it is a dependent source. But I have this voltage controlled current source that is connected to this resistor, and then I'm going to call the voltage across the resistor RL, uh, sorry, V out, right? Now, what would be V out? I would say, let's say that this is current, this current is called IX. V out is equal to RL times IX, right? And I know that since the current here is equal to IX because there's no current here then V out is equal to RL times, instead of IX, I can write negative K V1, right? Because that's the current that in that branch, and the negative is there just because, well, the direction of the current is the opposite of the way I defined IX, right? And then V1, what's the relationship of V1 to Vn? Well, looking at here, I can see that V1 and V have the same polarity, and they're referring to the same voltage across this node and this node. So V1 and V are the same thing. So I can write this as negative RL or negative K times RL times Vn. 
or in other words i can say that the gain of this amplifier or well let's say let's not call this amplifier an amplifier yet let's say that the gain of this circuit meaning that v out over v in is equal to negative k times rl okay now if i look at this i can see that v out over v in is equal to this fixed number rl could be like i don't know some resistance that we know and k is also some number that we know like for example here we had it at like we had a k equal to two right Looking at this, I can see that the V out over V in would be a number greater than one in terms of magnitude. I don't care about the sign yet, okay? In terms of the magnitude, KRL is a number greater than one. And when it is greater than one, it means that V out is a, a scaled up or magnified version of V in. And remember, the relationship between the two is a constant number. So it's a linear relationship, meaning that if V in is, has this frequency, V out has the exact same frequency. It's not going to have a different frequency or there's not going to be any kind of distortion in that waveform. It's just that it basically V out is, the, is just the V in multiplied by this number, right? And if the number in terms of magnitude is greater than one, then I can claim that V out is a magnified or amplified version of V in. And hence I have, a, uh, I have an amplifier. This circuit works like an amplifier, okay? So where does this negative sign come into the picture? Well, if you look at the two waveforms here and here, you will notice that uh, the V out is the flipped version uh, of the V in, and that's because of the negative sign, right? So like you're multiplying V in, let's say KRL is, I don't know, five. You're multiplying V in by a factor of five, but then you're also flipping the sign, so like you're, you're going to have an inverted sinusoidal, okay?